Namaste everyone. Uh, kindly come up on your mat, sit comfortably with your back and neck straight and gently close your eyes. Start observing your breath. Watch the natural flow of the breathing as you are inhaling and exhaling. Make sure your body is properly aligned. Keep the back and neck straight. Relax your face, neck and shoulders. And sit comfortably. Slowly begin to deepen the breathing. We'll be chanting Om three times, followed by three Shantis. Inhale deeply for Om. Just feel the vibrations. Join your palms together and drop the palms together. Keep them on the eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, begin to open up your eyes, start coming back with a smile. And Namaste to everyone. We welcome you at Himalayan Yoga Association. I am your Vini Somme and I will be conducting today's session. So today we are talking about three major schools of yoga. Your Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Dhyan Yoga, also famously known as Raj Yoga. Right. So let's begin with the first school itself, Bhakti, you know, the path of devotion. Right. So when we talk of the term Bhakti, it is derived from the root word Bhaj, B-H-A-J, Bhaj, which means loving service. So this entire path is based on emotion. Right. So an emotion of what? Of love. You know, so the Bhakt is a very emotional person and chooses to connect with the higher energies through this power of emotions. So don't feel weak next time somebody comes and says to you, you are a very emotional person. No, you can give the emotions right direction. And that is exactly what Bhakti Yoga does. It gives you the right way of channeling your emotions. All the anger, the frustration, jealousy, sadness that you feel, these are merely defilements of the mind. These emotions are impurities like milk. You know, if you uh, mix 
you know different ingredients in milk chemicals water you know the quality of the milk still remains but it is full of impurities and so is our mind you know we all have the same essence within we all have the purity of love within not love for just one or two people you know love for everyone the yogi feels love for everyone but it is clouded by the impurities like anger hatred jealousy sadness you know these are all impurities so the more you clean them the more you will realize how much you love everything around you and how much everyone around you is just looking for this pure emotion of love they're not looking for anything else you know all the other impurities are just a reaction to get more of the pure love in their life and this is what the bhakt also comes to the realization to uh, and they choose to you know go for the practices of bhakti yoga so that they can channel their emotions and connect with some energy which can actually you know help them to get free from all of their sufferings right so as per bhagavad gita there are two forms of bhakti apara bhakti and para bhakti okay so when lord krishna was describing the concept of bhakti yoga he said that there are two forms of it one is the more um, common practice right where you go to the temple visit the church regularly right you will see people reciting prayers or mantras right going for kirtans dancing singing you know it's a form of celebration you know love is always celebrated right so bhakti yoga is like very very encapturing in this sense so kirtans bhajans stories right but these are all surface level practices right so for any beginner these practices serve a very great purpose of putting their energy in acquiring all of these things and continuing their practice right it takes a lot of energy you know if you chant a mantra every day or go to the temple every day right it does serve you right but eventually as you do these practices consistently and regularly you will reach the form of para bhakti where you see that this energy which is driving everything is within you and within everyone around you now you will see god in everyone you know because that energy is present all around you and within everyone around you so you cannot force para bhakti you can merely increase the practice of para bhakti uh, para bhakti so much that it turns into the para bhakti right where the para bhakt doesn't need this recognition that oh there is no intellectual recognition that oh this is also god this is also god they intuitively have this understanding they feel this thing that is why you will see a yogi you know no matter who goes to a yogi they are always treated with love you know even if you throw stones at the yogi you go throwing stones at the yogi the yogi will show a lot of compassion because they have reached this stage of para bhakti so that is the depth till which the bhakti yoga goes right let's start with the next school which is gyan yoga so not everybody is emotional no some of us are very logical and analytical so for us gyan yoga is the path now gyan yogi is not just somebody who becomes a gyan yogi you will see most examples of gyan yogis they were born gyan yogis right because this is an advanced level practice i would say why because the truths are talked of in gyan yoga and most of us are not prepared to hear those truths you know you will run away you will stop living your life or have the will to live your life if you know certain truths are put in front of you they are existing but you never really you know seem to notice them and that is what the gyan yogi does the gyan yogi sets on a path where they explore this knowledge they try to see what is real and what is unreal what is permanent and what is impermanent and when they you know like a scientist they analyze all of these things 
they reach to the conclusion of what is permanent and then they stick with that they stick with making choices doing the practices which are more in alignment with the things that are permanent in nature rather than impermanent in nature right so it's it requires a highly developed mind one thing and second thing it requires a lot of will gyan yoga strongly believes that the reason why we are suffering is because of ignorance right and the only, only way to remove this ignorance is through development of discrimination right and why can we not remove this ignorance you know it's very hard i'm talking to you uh, about this very simply but if you really ask the question you know why are we unable to do it it's because of the existence of this illusion which gyan yoga specifically it has given this illusion a term maya okay so this illusion keeps us trapped you know it's so interesting to get attracted to the sense objects new clothes coming out so many advertisements right uh, new types of food right all of your senses are keeping you so engaged everything has such a big illusion around it you know that it is not permanent but why are you unable to come out of it it's because of the grip of this illusion right and the gyan yogi chooses to go against this thing to loosen the grip of this illusion and it is not easy right that is why i told you gyan yoga is a higher level practice it is a tough practice right so one develops certain pillars in order to support himself or herself to go into the core practices okay so there are four pillars that a person develops works on they are called sadhana chatushtha or the four pillars of gyan yoga once you put all these four pillars then you can build something upon it so one goes into the core practices of gyan yoga after attaining these four pillars and for us the main thing is the core practices right so what does one do in the core practices shravan or listening right manan or introspecting contemplating reflecting upon right and then nidhi dhyasan or meditating right so the knowledge is not merely knowledge it is actually the wisdom right so when you watch a diy video you know you think oh this thing i can make very easily you know then you start working on making that thing so you start your work right and then by the end when you reach your end product right it's going to give you so much wisdom on how you can approach that same thing maybe next time when you make it you'll be able to do it quicker you will recognize ways in which you can do it more efficiently so this is the entire path of gyan yoga you don't just acquire the information you use it you understand it in your own respect right that is where the meditation comes in you know it helps you to intuitively understand the realities of life it's not merely just reading up books reading up the vedas the upanishads no it's about making it a part of your life living your life as it is written experimenting constantly to see is it true or not right and the path of gyan yoga will ultimately lead you to a place where you are free from all of your sufferings right so this is true for all the paths of yoga but initially their starting point is different okay then we come to the third school of yoga which is dhyan dhyan yoga or very famously known as raj yoga so dhyan yoga is the term that is used in bhagavad gita where lord krishna explains to arjun the you know form of meditation right this is the form in which the mind is given the utmost rule and it is believed in the school of raj yoga that the mind has the ability to throw light on something if you train it well it will be able to throw light on whatever you are trying to perceive and let's be honest whatever we are trying to perceive it cannot be perceived through the naked eyes can it right as suffering we cannot see it through the naked eyes can you the kind of depression and anxiety people are going through you cannot see that through the naked eye but you experience it 
you know and that is where the mind the work on the mind comes in again this is a very advanced level practice not everybody can directly step into raj yoga so practices like hat yoga came into existence you know where you do asanas pranayama shat karma to prepare your body so that the mind becomes in a uh, comes in a position where it can go into meditative practices right so we're here the main thing is your work on the mind right all the practices that are done it's to support the meditation right so even the posture is done in order to support the meditation right not like monkeys jumping around standing on the head standing on the hand one posture is enough and the quality of the posture is comfortable and stable right if you are not able to sit comfortably and stably that means your asana practice is reaping no rewards right guys so next time you go for asana class be very careful you know be very mindful that you are doing asana to reach that stage where you can sit for a long period of time so generally the yoga sutras are uh, the texts which elaborate greatly on the path of raj yoga and you would have heard of the famous eight limbs of yoga right so ashtanga yoga right that is the practice for a beginner level from the beginning till the end how somebody who is just starting with these practices reaches the final goal this has been given by the uh, in the yoga sutras by maharishi patanjali right in the form of ashtanga yoga right so these are your three main schools of yoga you can choose any one of them depending on how uh, what is your strength how do you perceive your strength to be right and you can walk on that path experiment for yourself what that path is bringing to you right so let's end today's session with this keep your back and neck straight and very gently close your eyes and start observing your breath slowly begin to deepen your breathing We'll chant Om one time, followed by three shantis. Inhale deeply for Om. Om. Shanti. Shanti. shanti he just feel the vibrations join your palms together and drop your palms together keep them on the eyes very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms begin to open up your eyes start coming back with a smile and namaste to everyone thank you so much